Hello there. I'm Scotty and you're not. Today we're going to talk about <clears throat> the Lord of the Rings. Finally, we're going to get to the Lord of the Rings, starting off with Return of the King, of course. We're going to start from, that, from the end. How weird would that be if I started with Return of the King and went backwards? Uh, well, the fact of the matter is I haven't watched these movies in years. And, uh... Um, to watch them backwards would be kind of weird. Although one day I do want to do that. I want to watch them backwards. I want to watch Return of the King first, then The Two Towers, and then the other one and see how it does. But not, not now. I'm going to, for purposes of this review series, I'm going through them. And I'm only doing the first three of the rings. This is a part of Earth Month. Uh, that is one of the reasons why I'm doing only these three. Another reason is, uh, well, I have a certain... Not a hate, but a disdain for the Hobbit films because, well, it's a Hobbit trilogy that should have only been one film. Because, uh, okay, so my history with this franchise goes back to when I was in middle school. My sixth grade teacher read us The Hobbit. And The Hobbit is a very simple film. There's, you know, <clears throat> it's not grandiose in the scope of The Lord of the Rings. It's a hobbit takes a bunch of dwarves through a mountain with Gandalf, right? They encounter an ogre, Gollum, and a dragon. That's it. But the movies spread that out and add a un totally unnecessary battle for the final film. I'll get more into that when I eventually talk about the hobbit films. But when it comes to the Lord of the Rings, I was a Big fan. Like I said, we read The Hobbit, and when they said they were making these movies, I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know who P. Jackson was. I didn't know, you know, much of anything, and it came out. I had the extended edition VHS, two tape VHS, of The Fellowship of the Ring. And I would. They've been quiet for the last half hour, and now they're making noise out there. And I watched it all the time. The extended edition. I wouldn't, it wouldn't be like one sitting, I'd put the first tape in, and then I'd wait, and I'd put the second tape in. You would have to, you couldn't sit, unless I had a whole day to myself where I could just sit there and watch the entire extended edition. These are the theatrical editions, although they're three hours a piece, so I'm not sure <laughs> how long the extended editions are supposed to be, but yeah, uh, so I'm a big fan of these. I have a, this magazine, hold on. Somewhere. Here we go. Whoops. Luca almost went swimming. Stay, Luca. Silencio Bruno. Okay. I got this Newsweek special edition magazine on the Lord of the Rings. When it came out, uh, this has all stuff in it. Oh, here, here is a picture of the fellowship right here. There we are. Fantastic picture. Yes. So I was big on this when it came out. I had the VHS tape. It's quoting it. One ring to rule them all. We'll get to it. Yeah, and uh, I figured, you know, to do it this month, and since I have my sort of hobbit hair growing here, uh, let's talk about the first film. The Fellowship of the ring all right let's get into this first and foremost my overall thoughts on a film as i like to do this film is fantastic <laughs> from start to end and it's three hours long and i can't say it doesn't feel that because sitting there and i'm gonna do my dishes during while i was watching this movie i got as far as putting the dishes in the sink and filling it up with water i have yet to even you know it took me a while to clean off my kitchen table, let alone <laughs> to, uh, they're, they're sitting in the sink right now, ready for me to clean them, but I will do that, I will, I will, I will, but, you know, that's my goal, to get the dishes done a day at least, but, uh, I was just so enthralled with this, and it's three hours long, as I mentioned, you do feel the time, you know, you do feel the length of the film, I'm not gonna lie, 
it, it you know, everyone went, wow. Like, I, I get to the part where they're going to the, the mines of Moria, right? And I'm like, okay, so this should be close to time. They go through the mines, they fight the Balrog, they get out, uh, Sean Bean dies, and then the movie's over, right? Well, one, I forgot about the attack of the orcs and the ogre. And with that, that's like an hour and a half, almost an hour and a half more. I'm like, I have an hour and 16 minutes left of this movie. <clears throat> it does sort of feel it. And I will say that for it being called the Fellowship of the Ring, I don't think the Fellowship actually gets together until like halfway through the movie, to be honest. Uh, and, uh, but I, I gotta say, 20 years later, over 20 years later, it still holds up, man. It, okay, some of the CGI is, is dated. That's to be expected. It's 2001. It's not going to be fantastic. You can see that on the armies at the beginning here when we do the recap of what happened with the with the rings and everything. You know, the war, you can see that. And you can see it in just the, the slight glimpses of Gollum in this. He would look better in the Two Towers. And then with the ogre and CGI Legolas there for a second, you can tell that, yeah, this was 2001 CGI, which is... For the time, well, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone came out the same year, and the CGI in that film was way worse. I'm just saying. Uh, but, yeah, CGI is a little dated, but you get to those, like, they filmed in New Zealand, and it is, they're just fantastic, the way it looks. And combine that with how, I think it's Howard Shore who does the music, right? Music, music, music. You know that? Howard Shore does the score. Fantastic score. It feels, it makes this grandiose in scale. The look of New Zealand, the score playing, it's fantastic. And the cast is really good. You got a good cast here to name them all off. Let's see. We have Elijah Wood, Ian McKellen, Liv Tyler, Vigo Mortensen, Sean Astin, Kate Blanchett, John Reese Davies, Billy Boyd, Dominic Monaghan, Orlando Bloom, Christopher Lee, Hugo Weaving, featuring Sean Beam, Ian Hall, and Andy Serkis as Gollum. And duh, the cast is fantastic. I'm telling you, it is fantastic. So let's, let's get into the film itself and go through, as I usually do, this. Uh. So we start with a narration by uh, Kate Blanchett. I forget her name. Was it Galvindor or Jigeldor? I don't know. Galvindal? I don't know. <laughs> Does it say? Ian McKellen. Gerald Tolkien. He was in World War One, you know that? Um, Gollum. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about Gollum because it's... It's, uh... Why is Trump in there? Movies. Uh, that's just an adaptation. I'm just trying to find the cast here. Okay, Newsweek, Animal Draft House, Kate Blanchett, no, that's not Kate Blanchett, that's Liv Tyler, there's an orc, look, an orc, yeah, give me the ring, <laughs> the hobbits, the hobbits, Saga's breakout star, okay. 
Sorry, man. I don't know. Uh, but Kate Blanchett, she's the one who uh, narrates this, right? She tells of the rings. Uh, there were three rings given to the elves. I'm not going to go verbatim what she says. Seven given to the dwarf lords. And nine given to the race of men who desire above us was power. Uh, then we get the. Oh, that comes up before that. Hold on. Ah. My nose, he chase. There. Uh, Galadriel. I found her. Just so you know, she's right there. Galadriel, yes. Took me a minute. Found her. So Galadriel's the one that narrates this, okay? Then we, you know, we see this. We see that there's a a man named Isidor. Isidor. And he and a race of men fight off against Sauron, and he cuts the ring off his finger, right? And he takes the ring from him, cutting the ring off his finger, quote-unquote kills Sauron, although he's still kept alive by the ring. He thinks J.K. JK Rowling stole that from this. That's a horcrux. So me thinks J.K. Rowling needs to give uh, the, the Tolkien estate some monies for that, but... Uh, I just um, and we see that his greed and I'll just go ahead later we find out that Hugo Weaving's character says uh, that he tried to talk Isildar into throwing the ring into the uh, the volcano in Mordor and he said no and didn't do it because you know and then we find out he dies and the Ring is found by Gollum. But Gollum loses it, as we know from reading The Hobbit, and is found by some opposed, supposedly something that someone that the uh, ring did not expect a hobbit. But to kind of go ahead here, uh, don't we find out in part three that Gollum used to be a hobbit? So why was it like a big, oh no, a hobbit? When Gollum was a hobbit, way back when. I don't know. But, uh, yes, and so we know that he has it. We know that from the hobbit. But, uh, and no, I, you know, I'm reviewing these first, not the hobbits, because the hobbits technically came after this and they're influenced by this, so do these first, you know. So, uh, yes, yeah, so now we cut. And it's, we see Frodo Baggins sitting by a tree. And it says a fellowship of the ring. And Gandalf is coming into town. They say that he's he's a nuisance or whatever. Or, but everybody loves him still. Uh, and they're there. He's there to celebrate Bilbo Baggins' 111th birthday. And when Gandalf meets up with uh, Bilbo for the first time here, he says you haven't aged a day. Despite the fact that he looks a little older than he did when they showed him when he found the ring. Uh, here his hair is a little more gray, whereas there, it's 60 years later, but they say, oh, you haven't, he says, you haven't aged a day. And I'm like, his hair is grayer. That's not right. That's not wrong. That's wrong. You're wrong, Mr. Gandalf. But, uh, you know, so they're just celebrating, and we meet all sorts of characters that will be semi-important to this. We meet Samwise Gamgee, Frodo's best friend, along with Merry and Pippin, who are some... Like, Merry is a distant cousin of Frodo's, but then Pippin also says he is related to Frodo, too. Maybe all the hobbits are related, which is really weird when you think of him getting married. I don't know. Um, but uh, Bilbo, he has the ring. Puts it on, and he becomes invisible. D 
didn't work. But, uh, yes, and he makes his speech about how, you know, because he's leaving. And Gandalf sees the ring. Like, he knows he has the ring, I guess, but never did anything about it. Why? Like, why didn't Gandalf do anything about the ring? You know that's the one ring, you know, that needs to be destroyed. Why didn't you do something about it? Because it didn't do anything? Like, it's obviously kept him from aging. I don't know, but... Uh, Gandalf... Uh, cannot touch it, you know? Because uh, he doesn't want to be... Tempted. So... Bilbo... Drops it on the floor... Because he was going to take it with him, but... He can't take it with him, so he drops it on the floor. Frodo comes in, he finds it. They put it in an envelope, and he... And Gandalf says he needs to go somewhere and tells Frodo to keep it secret, keep it safe. And so he does, and an undetermined amount of time later, Frodo is coming back from hanging out with Sam, and he comes across uh, Gandalf, who we do see a scene of him looking through scrolls and textures and texts, texts, texts and stuff. But then he finds out about the ring. So he didn't. He knew he had the ring, but he didn't know what it was until he looked it up. Now I guess, and ye ancient Wikipedia, I guess, uh, ye old Wikipedia pages that are actually pages. <laughs> but uh, uh, but yes, and so they say that fire will reveal the words, and so he takes the. It's in still the envelope. Throws it in the fire. You get a cool burning away effect. And then he gives it to, oh, it's quite cool. I'm like, it's metal, it would be hot. But no, he gives it to Frodo, puts it in his hand, and the writing comes off. And of course it says, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness, bind them. Yes. Yes. Those words. So, Frodo is thrust on this journey. That he will meet up with Gandalf in Bree. And he is with Sam, who is gardening, eavesdropping. I don't drop eaves. Okay. But, uh, so he goes with him. And this comes to my first problem with the film is, you know, they get, they get going. There's oh, one more step and to be the furthest I've ever been away from home. And then they run into Mary and Pippa or something from Farmer Maggot. Yes, that is his name. Uh, and they they run into them, and then they're like, oh, we need to get to Bree. Oh, yeah, this way. And it's like, okay, so they're just with them now. And it's like, yeah, it's a bit of lazy writing. Like, oh, we need all four of these characters to get together. Uh, they just run into them and then go with them. It's like, eh, it's a bit meh for me. But they get to Bree. Gandalf, of course, is not there. So they meet Strider, who we know is Aragorn, played by Stuart Townsend. Er, no, he was supposed to be played by Stuart Townsend. Viggo Mortensen. How can I forget that name? He is Viggo. Viggo Mortensen. Stuart Townsend was cast, but he was too young. So, uh, <clears throat> yes. I got confused. So sue me. Uh, but yes. And Strider is a friend of Gond Gandalf's, and he's going to take him to Rivendell, where the elves live and they are being chased by the nine which are the ring wraiths or I forgot what the, the nazgul the nazgul and they went to the shire because they tortured the orcs tortured Gollum and got only two words out of him shire baggins so that's why he has to leave Gandalf somehow knew about this I don't know and, uh, yeah. Meanwhile, the reason why Gandalf is not there is because he went to see Saruman, and it turns out, Saruman, he's a bad guy. He's played by Christopher Lee. That's kind of obvious. Duh. 
But uh, yes, and so he like spins him around and around and beats his ass. But he's able to escape with a giant bird. And eventually he meets them in Rivendell. On the way to Rivendell, they are attacked and Frodo is stabbed with a blade that will turn him into a Nazgul, I think. But Liv Tyler playing Arwen shows up and she is the beloved of Strider, as we'll call him. And she takes him to Rivendell as though he's almost dead, but she gives him some elven energy power thing. I'm not exactly sure what she was doing, but he wakes up in bed in Rivendell and Gandalf is there. And Sam is also there because he hasn't left. He barely left his side. And they're all alive and they kind of meet up and yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. And then there's a meeting to determine what to do with the ring. Now that it isn't Rivendell, Hugo Weaving says that, like, I'm not gonna remember a lot of names, but he says that the ring cannot stay there because the Nazgul are after it. There'll be orcs coming after it. It's not safe there. So they need to figure out who is going to take the ring. But of course, no one can be trusted. And this is where we meet. We get the elves, uh, of course. Uh, and, you know, Arwen is important. Hugo Weaving is important. Of course, we got Legolas, played by Orlando Bloom. We get the dwarves. And the important one here is Gimli, played by John Rhys Davies. And we have the race of men from Gondor, led by Boromir, Boromir played by Sean Bean. So he's dead. Uh, but, uh, yes, and we get that one does not simply walk into Mordor line. And he did that. One, is, one does not simply walk into Mordor. And I'm like, one does not simply make me a meme. Although they do. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yes. Uh, and they're trying to figure out who's going to take it. And then Frodo is like, I will take it. And Gandalf was looking at him like, I know you would. He, he doesn't say it, but it just look on his face is like, I knew he was going to say that sort of thing. And, you know, it, this leads to one of my favorite scenes where everybody, you know, kind of says to help. And it's like, uh, we, we do find out that Strider is actually Aragorn, the uh, uh, descendant of Isildur. Uh, Isildur. Uh, so, there's that. Uh, and so he's the rightful heir to the throne of Gondor. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, I keep looking at the magazine. Sorry. So, uh, do we get the whole lines with, You have my sword. And you have my bow. And my axe. And everybody's coming. Sam comes in. Hey, I'm coming too. And then there's other. Then Mary and Pippi. Mary and Pippin. Pippi. Pippi Lost. Like it's Mary and Pippin are coming too. And oh, we have the Fellowship of the Ring. An hour and a half into the film. <laughs> Called Fellowship of the Ring. About. But yes. So here we are. And so where do we go? To the mines of Moria. First they climb over it. But then these weird birds show up, so they, and Saruman starts to use magic to shake the mountains, so they have to go under, into the mines, where Gimli is to introduce them to his cousin, Uncle Balin, who was one of the dwarves from The Hobbit. But he's dead, so is everyone else, because of goblins, right? Right? And then the orcs show up. This was about the point I'm like, okay, I gotta be close to the end. An hour and 20 minutes left, almost. So they get in there. It's not leaving out a lot of meh talking stuff, but really that's, you know, I'm just going through. Uh, and so they go through, and we have this pretty cool battle against the orcs and an ogre troll, cave troll, not ogre, troll, cave troll. I called it an ogre earlier. It's a troll. It's an ogre in... No, is it a troll? It's an ogre in Harry Potter, right? It's a troll. It's a cave troll here. Which, when I think of trolls, I think of little ones with big poofy hair. But, uh... uh <laughs> that's the trolls, I think. And they sing, Can't stop the feeling. That's can't stop the feeling. Imagine if this troll just started dancing around and singing Justin Timberlake. 
freaky. Anyway, <clears throat> they fight their way through and they eventually kill the troll. And they get out. During this, though, Frodo was once again stabbed. It's like, why do you keep getting stabbed? But it doesn't do anything, even though it looks like it hurts him. But because he's got this chainmail thing that Bilbo gave him. By the way, Bilbo was in Rivendell and went, yeah, after the, uh, the ring. Can you believe this is a PG in, in the, in the UK? Wow. No, no, this is PG-13, man. Freaking, do that guy so better. There it is. But yeah, so, yeah, Bilbo gave him that protective thing. Um, so it doesn't kill him, but it, you hear the sound of it going through. You hear that sound. But yeah, there's no damage, nothing. I don't know, it's really weird. It's really weird. I don't question magic, okay? But they... You know, they escape from those orcs, but they're surrounded by orcs until there's this growl in the distance. All the orcs run away, and it's the Balrog. We get this scene, they made a young Scotty cry out, No! Because I thought, I didn't read the books. So I thought Gandalf was dead here, man. I didn't know he was coming back. I thought he was dead. I liked Gandalf. He's like a grandpapa to Frodo, right? father figure esque but no so we get that and they stand there for an awful long time even though they know the Balrog's coming and they run do the jumping thing and you don't throw a dwarf and then you know we get the you shall not pass and it takes a second to break and then the Balrog falls in and then his little whip thingy grabs Gandalf. Before he gets pulled in, he goes, Fly, you fools! And that leads to the biggest question. Why didn't they use the big birds that Gandalf used earlier to fly to Mordor? Gandalf just told them to, but they didn't know what he was talking about. So there's your logic. There's your movie logic. He told them to. They didn't understand it. So they just walked anyway. Because really all you need is to get on one of those birds, fly to Mordor, and just... It's over. No, anyway. Plays a lot. Yes, of course, but... Yes, uh... But yes, so... Gandalf is quote-unquote deed. And they meet the forest where they meet... They get to the forest where they we get reintroduced to Galadriel. I remembered it! Who uh, warns Frodo that one of his people with him will try to steal the ring. Can you guess who? It's Sean Bean. Yes, because they, they move on. And Frodo, for some reason, goes up on his own and that's where Sean Bean is. And he tries to steal. He's like, give me the ring! But... It, of course he does, and he fights, he kind of fights him off a little bit, and then Aragorn shows up. <clears throat> and he looks at the ring, but he does not take it. He folds Frodo's, you know, in his hand, and he understands that Frodo has to go alone. So the whole fellowship thing really wasn't worth it, was it? But then, action sequence, because we got more orcs coming in, and they kidnap Merry and Pippin. And kill Sean Bean, as was foretold by it being Sean Bean in a movie. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, Frodo goes off on his own, but is followed by Sam, who almost drowns. Either that or he wanted to be in a Little Mermaid so bad, he just went in the water. But he almost drowns, and they go off together. And then the remaining three, Aragorn, uh... Gimli and Legolas decide they're going to go after Merry and Pippin. And then the movie ends. To be continued in the next film. So overall, I think it's a fantastic film. It's enjoyable. Enjoyable? It's enjoyable. Uh, 
Uh, the only complaints I really have is the length of the movie, which is mostly a nitpick, because you know these are going to be long anyway. CGI, also a nitpick. Uh, so, and there's other few things I mentioned that are just kind of nitpicks. Throwing in Mary and Pippin and just pff, literally fall into their laps. Uh, but, again, nitpick. So, there's only one rating I can give this movie with that in mind. And that is to say that when it comes to the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring is going to the moon, baby. So what are your thoughts on the Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one. One more time. Yeah.